Okay guys, so in today's video we're going to be talking about everything to do with thermostats for your reptiles. But before we get into that video, I would just like to quickly ask if you could check out the link in the description and in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. Just because we've got a bit of a competition going on at the minute and it would really help if you could take part in that. But without um, further ado, let's get straight into the video. So before I get into discussing the different types of thermostats that you can buy and each of the merits, I do think that it's essential that I take the time just to discuss what a thermostat is and why they're so important for reptiles. So basically all a thermostat does is control how much heat your heat emitter gives off for your reptile to ensure that the temperature stays at a desired set point. Now this might seem pretty basic and thermostats can be quite expensive so it seems like a lot of money to waste on something that's really simple but it really can save the lives of your reptiles because it's very possible for a heater to give off too much heat and actually end up burning your reptile which really does happen a lot without thermostats and it's also a very real fire hazard so without a thermostat keeping the heaters so that they're only giving off enough heat and not too much really couldn't be any more important. They also make it a little bit easier to choose what exact heater you need for your animal. So for example, if you wanted to achieve a basking spot of like 38 degrees for a bearded dragon, then you might go out and have to buy a range of different basking bulbs in a range of different wattages, say 50 watt, 100 watt, 150 watt, just to find out which one gave the right temperature. Or you could just buy the 150 watt bulb and put it on a thermostat. And that way, not only are you um, saving time on having to go to different shops and send the bulbs back or whatever, but you're actually allowing um, to compensate for if the weather changes and it becomes cooler. So say, for example, that the weather outside is pretty bad and your room temperature drops by a couple of degrees, well, the thermostat will just keep the heater on a bit longer and it'll maintain the same temperature, so your reptile's not going to suffer as a result. So now that I've got that out of the way, I'm going to talk about the different types of thermostats that you can buy. So there are actually three main types of thermostats that you can get for your reptiles. And probably the most well recognised one is the one I'm showing you right now, and that is the mat stat. This is for controlling heat mats only really. You can do ceramic heat emitters, but I wouldn't really recommend it and I'll explain why in a sec. So these are the sort of typical thermostats that people think of when you think of thermostats for homes and that. They put the heater on and then wait until the temperature rises to a set amount above the set point and then they'll turn the heater off and wait until the temperature goes below um, the set point by a certain amount and then they'll kick back in for a bit. So as you can see there's like a little red light that's just turned on and that tells me that um, the thermostat is delivering power to the heat mat that this is running so that now the, the area is actually getting warmer but because it comes on and off for a long period of time that does mean that there can be quite a temperature swing with these things. So that is all right if you're using heat mats to heat insects, which I'm doing at the minute, just doobie roaches. So I'm not really bothered about giving the most high-tech equipment, given that they're probably going to be eaten by something in the next couple of weeks. And these are quite cheap thermostats, coming in at about 20 to £25, pounds, so they are ideal for that. However, they only have a low power acceptance of about 100 watts, so you can use them for ceramic heat emitters, but with the temperature swing and the fact that they've only got a relatively low power acceptance, they're not really ideal for using directly with your reptiles, and you cannot use them at all with filament heaters, such as your light bulbs, because when they turn on and off, um, the perpetually warming up and down and then cooling again is just going to kill the bulb in a very short time. So overall, mat stats are a very cheap thermostat and they're ideal for using heat mats on insects and sort of supplementary heating, but really they're not that good for reptiles themselves. So the next step up in terms of thermostats is the pulse proportional thermostat. 
This works similarly to a mat sat in that it turns the heat emitter on or off, but it does so in short bursts that are only a fraction of a second long, so that the temperature doesn't swing as much, and the proportion of the time that this is like pulsing, switched on, relates to how far away the actual temperature is from the set point. So this does mean that pulse proportional thermostats are far more accurate than mat stats, or on off thermostats is the alternative name for those ones. So these are far more suitable for reptile use directly. So if you've got like a rack, even though I don't recommend racks, but let's just ignore that for a second, and you are using a heat mat in there, then I would really recommend using a pulse proportional thermostat over a mat stat. And if you're just using it for like a ceramic heat emitter, then these are definitely the way to go, given that they have a much um, higher power acceptance, usually of 600 watts, which is much higher than the 100 watts of the mat stat. So you can use higher wattage ceramic heat emitters, um, which is really useful. Again, however, these are not to be used with filament bulbs because filament bulbs still won't like being turned on and off. And these are far more expensive than mat stats, starting at about £50 if you're lucky and anywhere up to £60. So overall, pulse proportional thermostats are basically a bit of a step up from mat stats and I would recommend these if you're using a ceramic heat emitter or I think you can use them with reptile radiators but you might want to check that. So the third type of thermostat that you can get is the is the dimming thermostat or dimmer stat as we call them in the hobby. Now these are different to the other two types of thermostats that I've discussed so far and that instead of turning the heat emitter on or off they reduce the power supply to it so that it reaches the desired temp and then they sort of maintain that. They allow a bit of swinging but really they are far more accurate than the other types in my experience and they can be used with any type of heater so you can use them with heat mats, ceramic heat emitters, um, reptile radiators and more importantly filament heaters so if you've got a baskin bulb then you can run that off one of these. The standard dimming thermostats come in at about the same price bracket as the pulse proportional thermostats however what I'm showing you right now is actually the box for a digital one I'm actually showing you the box because when I tried to film the thing directly, the little LED screen thingy that was sort of coming up as a funny colour on the camera. So today I couldn't show it yet so I just dug out the box and I'm going to show you that instead. Now you can get digital versions of all the different types of thermostat and it does add about £30 or £40 in some cases to how much they cost. So it is a bit of an investment but really you do get what you pay for. So I've never actually bought one of the standard dimming thermostats because really the digital ones are just so much better and when it comes to buying thermostats in the future for my reptiles directly, unless they're just for backup heaters, which is what I use the pulse proportional thermostats for, I will definitely be looking out for these no matter what type of heater I've got. So as you might be able to tell on the box right here, um, there are loads of different options. So you actually get a second timer with these ones by Habistat that allows you to plug lights in or a mister if you really wanted. And it times down to intervals as small as a minute. You can have different nighttime temperatures. It, it's got a power meter on it so it tells you what the actual output is. It's got a continual readout of the temperature. And basically it's just got lots of little settings that for the extra money you pay, um, it really is worth it in my opinion. But if you want to find out more about these thermostats, then I did do a review of them a while ago. So I'll throw a link to that video um, in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. So that wraps up today's video and I do really hope that you've enjoyed it and that it has taught you a bit about thermostats if you weren't really sure what you were getting into. Because I know when I was starting out in the reptile hobby, thermostats were a bit of a complicated topic given that I'd never even heard of one before, although that was like five years ago now, so I have learned a lot since then. But anyway, I hope that this has helped you understand more about them and know which type that you need to get for your reptile. And if you do have any further questions, then don't hesitate to drop us a comment and I'll get to it as soon as I can. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.